chains are gone. My debt is paid from death to life and grace to Good morning, welcome to our service this morning. I think it's just wonderful that everybody's so happy to see one another that we just can't stop talking. <laughs> you can't hear me. No, I am on. Is that, I am on. Okay, right. Welcome. It, welcome, it's lovely to be here this morning on such a beautiful morning. And as we are in that season of resurrection, new life and new hope, today there's an opportunity, if you would like, to maybe tell some stories of what God is doing uh, in your life or something that you've witnessed that is a sign of resurrection and new life. So uh, there'll be a time um, in a little bit to do that. So if you want to be thinking about something that we want to give thanks to God for or something to give him glory for what he's been up to that would just be wonderful uh, the, it will this is being live streamed but um, you won't be seen and we won't give any names so if you would like to do that that would be a huge gift to one another as well as we recognize God is at work amongst us and so as we come to worship this morning let's pray Heavenly Father, we thank you for the beauty of this day, for the beauty of our resurrected Lord, for the beauty of the hope and life that you bring. Be with us, strengthen us, flow in, with and through us this day, we pray, by the power of your Holy Spirit. Amen. And so let's stand together to sing, Praise my soul, the King of Heaven. Praise my soul, the King of Heaven, to His feet Thy tribute bring. Ransom, heal, restored, forgiven, who like Thee His praise should sing.
praise is rising eyes are turning to you we turn to you When we see you, we find strength to face the day. In your presence, washed away. Worthy of all our praises, Hosanna, Hosanna, come have your way among us, we welcome you here, Lord Jesus, hear the sound. When we see you, we find strength to face the dead. In your presence, all our fears are washed away, washed away. From Isaiah, yes, Lord, walking in the way of your laws, we wait for you. Your name and renown are the desire of our hearts. My soul yearns for you in the night. In the morning, my spirit longs for you. When your judgments come upon the earth, the people of the world learn righteousness. Let's uh, be seated and it's, we have this opportunity now to give God the name and renown that he is worth in sharing some of our stories um, as our hearts yearn to hear those good things of God. Is there anybody who has anything they would like to share with us this morning? We've come into church this morning and we've got lots of a few new faces and a few old faces and there was a real sort of noise and a bubble and um, people being excited and I, I just think that's, that's lovely and that's sort of newness and refreshing and yeah, there you go. Sense of God's presence, absolutely. At meeting point on Thursday we had um, our service which was brilliant for 39 years of meeting point being in, in being and um, we were meant to have a cream tea and I was meant to get the cream which I forgot 
But Fred went to Sainsbury's and bought us three pots of clotted cream, which made the scones absolutely marvellous. <laughs> Great thanks for small things. Anyone else? It's not long ago, probably a year or so, I was despairing that I didn't have a purpose. I couldn't work um, because of my illness and I couldn't see how I was any use to anybody. And it's only been the last week or so I've just realised that I've actually now got too much purpose. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, I've managed to find opportunity to volunteer at the school I help with toddlers here. I do various different things that are voluntary because I can't work full time. But I feel like I've actually got a purpose in my life and that makes so much difference. And I feel it's God's purpose for my life at this time because again and again and again, he's bringing people into my path who not only need to hear about him, but want to hear about him. That's really exciting. Thank you. Beautiful stories of resurrection, new life, hope and all giving glory to God. Dave, have you got your... So if the children would like to come up and sit on the carpet, <clears throat> because um, Dave's going to do his special spot now. OK, righto. Now, have any of you played a game called Marco Polo? <gasps> you know what that is? Yes. No, you haven't? OK. Well, it's a game that people play, usually in a swimming pool, where you have to, where, where, where someone has to close their eyes and, so, and find someone else. Who's, and the person with their eyes closed says, Marco. And then the other person says, Polo. And then the person saying Marco has to try and find the other one uh, without opening their eyes. So I thought we'd try something a little bit like this oh, in, in the church. Okay, so now, would one of you like to volunteer to go and hide somewhere? The, okay, Josiah, all right. Okay, now we'll so I tell you what, we'll all look the other way. Should we all look the other way while Josiah finds somewhere to hide? Yeah, you find somewhere to hide. It's got to be in this room, though, somewhere, okay? But somewhere we can't hear. And you definitely don't need that bag. Okay, right then. <coughs> now, who wants, who, which, who wants to go and look for him? Who wants to go and look for him? Do, do you want to, should we have, oh, is, well, you're his sister, so maybe do you want to have a go? Do you want to have a go at finding him in a moment? Okay, so, okay, are you, are you hidden, Josiah? Okay, let's, let's imagine he is. So, um, now, I'm sorry, I'm not sure what your name is. What's your name? I'm David. Arabella. Arabella, okay. Now, so what you need to do is, in a moment, shout Marco, and then hopefully Josiah will shout Polo, and then you've got to go and try and find him, okay? And if you're struggling, what you can do, you can shout Marco again, and then he'll shout Polo, and then you know, hopefully we'll be able to find him, okay? Is that okay? Yeah. All right, then, you shout Marco. Marco. Right, go on, then, see if you can find him. You can shout it again. If you're struggling, you can shout Marco again. <laughs> Have you found him? Hey, well done. Good job. All right, okay. Now let's. Do you want to hide? Okay, Grace wants to have a go at hiding. Then off you go, Grace. Quick. Quick. We'll all turn the other way. Do you want to come over here? I'll we'll have another go in a moment. Oh, oh, well, maybe you and, you and, you and, maybe you and, oh, could you, do you think you could help Samuel find him at this time? Would that be all right? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Uh, okay, okay. You, you sh so, um, so, Samuel, what you and Arabella have got to do is shout Marco. Can you do that? One, two, three. Marco. Okay, off you go. See if you can find her. Yeah. Do you need to shout again? You can shout Marco again. Marco. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well done, good job. Okay, come back, come back to the front. Okay, now this time, uh, let's say, um, Arabella, do you want to go and hide in a moment? Okay, we're going to do it. No, no, we don't. So we're going to do it a bit different this time. Arabella's going to hide. Is that okay? And, and before we start shouting Marco and Polo and all that, we'll get everybody to make a bit of noise, okay? Right, okay, so to make it a bit more difficult. Okay, so all of us turn the other way, and Arabella, you go and hide quick. Woo. Okay, uh, just hide. Do you want to go and look this time? Okay, are you ready, Arabella? Okay, you, you shut, Marco. Marco. Can you find a try again? Shut, Marco. Marco. 
I mean, that's pretty hard, isn't it? Have you got any idea? Oh, you did. Okay, come on, come back. <laughs> okay, we're going to try it once more, okay? Once more. Um, can, now, could you, could you hear Arabella when you said Marco? No. How did you find her? Because I guessed. You just guessed, okay. <laughs> right. Okay, now this time... We're going to do this once more, and everybody's going to make a noise again, but this time I'm going to give you both a walkie-talkie. <gasps> okay? All right, okay, you can hide. Yeah, you can hide, okay? Let's just check, let's just check the work first. I did. Uh, okay, so now do you know do you know how these work? Yes. Okay. I know. Okay, so now what way it works, let's show about how it works. So what you do, you press that button and you talk into it and then it'll come out of the other one. Do you want to try that? Press the button. Hello. Press the button and then talk into it. Hello. Can you hear that? Press the button, keep it held in and talk into it. Hello. Can you hear that, Grace? You can? Okay, do you want to go and we'll, go, we'll turn around, uh, and, uh, do you want to go and hide Arabella? And when she shouts Marco, you, you press the button. Yeah, we'll have a go with it later. Don't look, don't look, don't look. Okay, don't look, don't look, don't look, don't look. Okay, you ready? Okay, everybody make some noise. I would say, Marco! Are you getting the message in there? Oh, oh, that's a bit. Um, Sorry, Arabella, you just have to describe where you are. Sorry, I forgot to say that. <laughs> Can you hear what she's saying? <laughs> OK, right, OK, we'll bring it to an end there. OK, thank you, Arabella. Well done. Well done, everybody. <laughs> now, there was, there was, believe it or not, a point to that. And <laughs> it didn't work. It didn't work. But there was a point to that, and that is that one of, one, one, of the, one of the things that Jesus said we're going to be thinking about today, he said, my sheep hear my voice. I know them and they follow me. So Jesus is able to speak to us in a way that we can hear despite the hubbub that's going on around us. Okay, the experiment failed. I probably didn't think it through well enough, but that's the message. <laughs> All right, thank you. Thank you, Marabella. Well done. Good job. Okay. No, we... Hello. Okay. We're going to um, sing a song now. So if you want to stay and do some actions, please do. My God is so big, so strong, and so mighty. There's nothing that he cannot do. Boom, boom. Excellent. So let's um, all stand and sing. And then at the end of the song, our children and young people are going to go out as we pray for them. My God is so big. for our children young people heavenly father we just thank you for the love that you have and we pray that as our children and young people grow that they might learn to hear and recognize your voice as you call them on in faith we ask this in jesus name amen amen, amen. so it's time for groups you can go out and have some fun and we're going to have some fun here too <laughs> So we're going to come to our time of confession. When we see in the light of God's love, ourselves still loved too. God shows his love for us 
in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. So let us then show our love for him by confessing our sins in penitence and faith. We say together, God of mercy, we acknowledge that we are all sinners. We turn from the wrong we have thought and said and done and are mindful of all that we have failed to do. For the sake of Jesus, who died for us, forgive us all that is past and help us to live each day in the light of Christ our Lord. Amen. May the God of love and power forgive you and free you from your sin, heal and strengthen you by his spirit, and raise you to new life in Christ our Lord. Amen. We're now going to have our first reading from Acts. The first reading is from Acts, chapter 9, verses 36 to 43. In Joppa, there was a disciple named Tabitha. In Greek, her name is Dorcas. She was always doing good and helping the poor. About that time, she became ill and died, and her body was washed and placed in an upstairs room. Lydda was near Joppa, so when the disciples heard that Peter was in Lydda, they sent two men to him and urged him, please come at once. Peter went with them, and when he arrived, he was taken upstairs to the room. All the widows stood around him, crying and showing him the robes and other clothing that Dorcas had made while she was still with them. Peter sent them all out of the room. Then he got down on his knees and prayed. Turning towards the dead woman, he said, Tabitha, get up. She opened her eyes and seeing Peter, she sat up. He took her by the hand and helped her to her feet. Then he called for all the believers, especially the widows, and presented her to them alive. This became known all over Joppa, and many people believed in the Lord. Peter stayed in Joppa for some time with a tanner named Simon. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our second reading this morning is uh, from John chapter 10, verses 22 to 30. <clears throat> then came the festival of dedication at Jerusalem. It was winter and Jesus was in the temple courts walking in Solomon's colonnade. The Jews who were gathered there around him saying, how long will you keep us in suspense? If you are the Messiah, tell us plainly. Jesus answered, I did tell you, but you do not believe. The works I do in my Father's name testify me about me, but you do not believe because you are not my sheep. My sheep listen to my voice. I know them and they follow me. I give them eternal life and they shall never perish. No one will snatch them out of my hand. My Father who has given them to me is greater than all. No one can snatch them out of my Father's hand. I and the Father are one. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Father, we thank you that you're here, you're here and that you speak to us, and we ask that you would reveal your word this morning. Amen. Amen. Well, the, 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 the part of the context for um, the gospel reading that we heard just now um, was that um, the religious leaders um, in Israel were very much looking forward to and thinking about um, a saviour who would come 
and save their nation, which was at the time occupied by um, a foreign force um, and they were in a situation they were not comfortable with. But in their scriptures, which now form our Old Testament, were many promises that someone would come and would save the nation of Israel. And uh, they were looking for that person. And, um, and when Jesus was born, that person arrived. Um, and, uh, and as he began teaching um, in, in Israel, he started revealing uh, more clearly the purposes of God for Israel and for the world. But these, many of these um, religious leaders who had studied <laughs> to the nth degree the scriptures that they had, they didn't actually recognise Jesus, which is an extraordinary thought, really, that they felt that they were more desperate maybe for their saviour than anything else. But when the saviour arrived, they didn't recognise him. And, um, well, in, in the reading that we just heard, um, some of the people were saying to Jesus, are you the Christ? And Christ means anointed one, as in God's special saviour, really. And, um, uh, and, you know, is it you? Because some people thought, yes, Jesus sounds like he comes from God and he's doing some remarkable things. And others thought, no, he, he can't be from God. There's a few things wrong with Jesus and we don't think he can possibly be from God. Um, and um, I... <coughs> This is interesting to think about, and I, I'm um, quite inspired by a story I heard a preacher tell, which, which, which I've shared before, and it's, it, this preacher told a story about a dream he had about an interaction with Jesus, and, and, and in this interaction, he was, he was the disciple Peter, and, uh, and it was, um, he, his dream sort of placed him as Peter in a Bible story, and in this story, um, Jesus said to his disciples, who do people say that I am? And the disciples reply, well, some people say you're such and such a prophet. Others say you're, you're another prophet or John the Baptist. And then, uh, and then Jesus said, well, who do you say that I am? And, uh, and as the story goes, Peter says, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. And, and Jesus is really pleased that Peter has recognised him, inspired by the Holy Spirit. Um, now, this preacher who told the story was Peter in this dream. And when Jesus turned to him and said, um, who, who do you say that I am? Um, this preacher, having a dream, said he knew the answer. He was familiar with the story. But he said to say to Jesus, you are the Christ, you are the Son of God, was actually very difficult. It wasn't a straightforward thing to say. Because there standing in front of him, the Christ, the Son of God, Jesus, but he just looked ordinary. He was just an ordinary bloke. You couldn't, he wasn't shining. He didn't have a halo around his head. And, um, and even the Bible itself says that there was nothing special about Jesus that you would desire him, nothing about his, pres his appearance that would make him look special. But nevertheless, he was the Christ and is the son of the living God. Um, so as, as our reading this morning shows, and as you know, that story, which is also in the Bible, shows, Jesus can be right there, but, but people don't necessarily recognise it. Um, and uh, and um, my favourite part of the, re the Gospel reading this morning is also, it's also one of my favourite scriptures where Jesus says, uh, my sheep, speaking of people who follow him and want to follow him, my sheep hear my voice, I know them, and they follow me. Now, there's no question that there's a lot of voices in the world and a lot of interruptions, a lot of hubbub and noise, distractions. Um, you know, some of them awful, some of them just distractions. Um, um, but Jesus has this confidence that he, if, if, if we are his sheep, we will hear. We will hear him. And if, if we imagine ourselves in, into, the, into the situation where Jesus said those words, you know, just supposing you were an ordinary person, in, um, in Jerusalem at the time that Jesus said that. Maybe you'd be impressed with who Jesus, the, the things that Jesus said, how he treated people and spoke about people, and, and, and some of the wonderful things um, that he did. But there, what, if all the, what if the majority of the religious leaders were saying, look, this Jesus, he's actually a deceptive fellow. You can't trust him. He is not, he is not sent by God. You know, what do you do if you're an ordinary person? In that context, your religious leaders are telling you one thing, and then this, this, this Jesus, who seems really quite inspiring, 
Um, it, it, you know, they're, they're conde- the religious leaders are condemning him. What, what, how, how, do you, how do you process that? You know, how do you have confidence with a decision that you make about who Jesus, um, who Jesus is? Well, let's hear what Jesus says. My sheep hear my voice. I know them and they follow me. And who, who, is, who is Jesus' sheep? Well, G- Jesus talked um, quite a bit about who his true followers were. And um, I, I, think, I think we can kind of boil it down, really, to an honesty before, an honesty before God. Um, he, he told a story about two people going to pray. One uh, was a tax collector who would have been assumed to be um, an ungodly fellow who was um, deceiving people out of money. And, and the other was, was a Pharisee who would have been a sort of religious, um, I guess, superstar, really, or, or you know, powerful religious fellow. Um, and and um, they, they both pray, and, and Jesus, in his story, tells, tells us what, what they prayed, and the, the Pharisee um, thanks God that he's not like the tax collector and, and, and lists the good things that he does. And uh, the tax collector says in his prayer, he says, have mercy on me, um, a sinner to God. And, and Jesus says that the one that, 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 come, uh, that, that comes up from his prayer justified is the tax collector. He's been honest in his heart about where he's at and he's desired um, to be justified by God. He's placed himself honestly before God. Um, and, um, you know, the, the, the truth is that um, religious, religious observance and knowledge and so on, actually, <laughs> it, it doesn't make us a true follower of God, is the, is the reality. Um, it's what goes on in our hearts and in our secret prayers um, before God. And if we can be honest before him, and it's not a matter of competence or, or, or even maturity, really, um, or, or, or status, it's... it's um, you know, our, our position with, with God is really, really a product of our honesty before him and our desire to follow him. Um, <clears throat> um, now, this, 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 is, uh, this, this uh, scripture, um, my sheep hear my voice, um, I know them and they follow me, has, has really helped me a lot um, because, um, well... As I said, it speaks of Jesus' confidence that his sheep can hear his voice. It doesn't mean that we live without mistakes and make every, get every decision correct. Um, but it does mean that if we seek him, um, whether we feel it straight away or not, we are able to hear his voice. And, and in my experience, when I'm, when I'm facing some kind of challenge where I need to make a decision, um, this is often a scripture that I turn to um, um, and turn over in my mind. I meditate on it. And um, my, my experience is that as I do that, um, as I'm facing a challenge, it lifts some of the anxiety of that challenge off me. It's not the case that the moment I go to God with a problem, I necessarily hear the answer. I know what I'm going to do. God has spoken to me and I'm, um, you, you know, the problem disappears and I, um, just like that. But um, step one is often that, um, you know, a joy can come in the place of anxiety as I realise that um, I can hear God's voice. (laughs) Um, He's got confidence that if I want to follow him, I can hear his voice. And and this confidence, you know, it's not based on my competence, as I said earlier, or my sort of um, religious um, status or whatever. It's, It's based on the honesty of my heart and the desires of my heart. So if I can get honest before God and, uh, and put some faith in him, then I can hear from him. Um, one, one example of this is um, a little over a year ago, uh, my job came to an end. Technically, it wasn't a redundancy, but it was quite like a redundancy. And, um, and you know, I didn't have a job. And I was, as I was, um, and I didn't, I, I applied for some jobs quite, quite early, early on that I wasn't successful in, in, in being appointed to. And, uh, and I, I put some time aside to, to, to pray. And um, as I was um, praying and you know, reading the Bible somewhat, um, a scripture seemed to be highlighted to me. Um, it wasn't written for me <laughs> specifically, but, but I just felt it kind of seemed to sparkle and glow. And, uh, and it's this, and it says, um, this is Isaiah 58, verse 11, if you're interested. Um, and, and it says this, And the Lord shall guide you continually. And satisfy your soul in drought, and strengthen your bones. And you shall be like a watered garden, and like a spring of water, whose waters do not fail. Um, I'll just read that again. Um, And the Lord shall guide you continually, and satisfy your soul in drought, and strengthen your bones. And you shall be like a watered garden, and 
like a spring of water, whose waters do not fail. So I was, in, in some sense, facing a drought. There's no income. <laughs> didn't have the income I was used to. Um, but there was a promise that God would strengthen my bones and I should be like a well-watered garden and a spring of water whose waters do not fail. I, I just had this sense um, from the Spirit of God that that was for me. And I can honestly say that, um, you know, the period of time after uh, uh, me losing, losing, uh, losing my work and my income at that time, um, it, it was a special time, and God provided, and I can say uh, that um, my waters did not fail. <laughs> and, and um, you know, it was even a, a joyful time, and it talks about strengthening your bones, you should be like a watered garden. There's no, you know, there's no big problem there, is there, for the person that God's spoken that to. And uh, um, so, so with that scripture, um, you know, the anxiety was lifted off me, and, and, and the Lord's provided. Um, so go, go, going, going back to the scripture that we, that we heard, that um, uh, the, the story of Jesus, he said, uh, well, I'm on the wrong page, excuse me. <clears throat> so it says, my sheep uh, hear my voice, I know them and they follow me. I give them eternal life and they shall never perish. No one can snatch them out of my hand. My Father who has given them to me is greater than all. No one can snatch them out of my Father's hand. I and the Father are one. So Jesus there is talking about a very strong connection with his sheep and a real safety for his sheep. And, um, you know, things, things for Jesus' sheep, the people who followed him, uh, a little while, you know, after Jesus was crucified, things got you know, in some places got very difficult for followers of Jesus, but God's Spirit never left them. Uh, and, and, you know, if we, if we are following him, then, um, you know, these promises belong to us and we can, we can build our confidence um, on, on them. Um, I think Jesus made it so clear that God's love um, and his provision is, is, you know, it's not based on our religious status and our, our knowledge and so on. It's based really on his love for us and our, our acceptance um, and faith in his love. Um, in, the, um, in, in, the, in the other reading that, uh, from Acts, uh, where a story was told of, of Peter the Apostle, who had previously been Jesus' disciple, Peter the Apostle praying for someone and seeing them raised from the dead. You know, we, it's remarkable, it's wonderful, and we know quite a bit about Peter. He's mentioned quite a lot in the Bible, and we know that he, he was someone who'd got things significantly wrong previously, um, and yet there in our story from Acts, he's doing something remarkable. He was not disqualified um, by the things that he'd got wrong and his incompetence uh, and, and lack of understanding in a number of situations. Um, you know, God used Peter, God was with him and did remarkable things with his life. And uh, um, let me share this. This is from another scripture um, uh, that I think is remarkable and, and informs some of these things. It's from Hebrews 11, verse 6. It says, whoever comes to God um, must believe that he is. So we need to have faith in God when we come to him. And you know, the Bible says that, that that faith is a gift. It's not actually a product, really, of analysis or um, a, a rigorous scientific study. You know, even if through a rigorous scientific study you did come to the conclusion that God's probably there, actually, to really form a relationship and confidence in God, we need faith. And that faith is a gift of God. And if you want to know God, even if you feel somewhat <laughs> estranged from him, you know, as someone who, who believes, I can tell you that um, God is ready to give you that gift of faith because he loves you. Um, so, so we need to have faith that he is. Um, and it goes on. And that he rewards those who earnestly seek him. Which is an interesting thing to say. We must believe that he is and that he rewards those who, who um, earnestly seek him. Um, Jesus was really bothered about hypocrisy in religion and he got very angry about it. And um, as I said earlier, you know, it was the tax collector's prayer, the tax collector who was honest about the things that weren't right in his own life and the, the wrong that he had done, who was justified before God. But then at the same time, according to this scripture in Hebrews, we should come to God with a certain confidence that he has something for us. 
we must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder for the, of those who earnestly seek him. Um, and so turning back to that scripture where Jesus said, my sheep hear my voice, I know them and they follow me. You know, when we pray, let's pray with confidence. Let's choose to be confident that he will reward us with hearing his voice. Um, he laid his life down for us. He does love us. He does have things to say with, uh, to us. So let's take him at his word uh, and believe that we can hear from him if we are honest as we approach him. Amen. I'll pray. Lord Jesus, thank you for these promises and, and these words and the wonderful things that you've laid out before us for us to read and to study and to hear. Lord, we thank you that you said that when you went to your Father, you would send your Spirit to live amongst us and within us. And we welcome you. We invite you to speak to us and teach us to trust you at your word. Amen. There might be something that's just stuck in your mind that of something that Dave's been talking about. So we just invite you to just over this time of worship to reflect on that and to listen and see what God might be saying to you. So we're just going to leave a few moments of silence before we enter into our time of worship where you can take any posture you wish. So let's just be quiet and listen. What might Jesus be saying to you today? What might he be calling you to? Come, Lord Jesus, we pray. Thank you, Lord. May we continue to hear you speaking through worship and prayer. spoke a word you were singing over me you've been so so good to me for I took a breath you breathe your life in me you've been so so kind to me oh the overwhelming never ending reckless love of God oh it chases me down fights till I'm found leaves the 99 I couldn't earn it I don't deserve it still you give yourself away I was your foe, still your love fought for me. You've been so, so good to me. I felt no worth, 
you paid it all for me you've been so so kind to me oh the overwhelming never-ending reckless love of god oh it chases me down fights till i'm found leaves the 99 i couldn't I don't deserve it Still you give yourself away Oh, the overwhelming Never-ending Reckless love of God There's no shadow you won't light up Mountain you won't climb up No wall you won't kick down, lie you won't tear down, coming up. No shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up, coming after me. Wall you won't kick down, lie you won't tear down, coming after me. Oh, the overwhelming, never ending, reckless. I couldn't earn it, I don't deserve it Even when I'm lost in the deepest valley 
You're holding on to me And even when the silence falls around me You're holding on to me You're holding on to me You restore my soul You restore my soul You restore my soul You restore my soul Lost in the deepest valley You're holding on to me And even when the silence falls around me You're holding on to me Even when it feels like we're separated You're holding on to me You restore my soul You restore my soul You restore my soul Restore my soul. You restore my soul. The Lord is my shepherd. He restores my soul. We just praise you and thank you, Lord, that you bring restoration and hope to each and every soul. May we hear your voice calling us to the place of green pasture, to rest in time of trouble and hope and new life. Amen. Amen. To continue in prayer now. When I say um, we pray to the Father, please join me in saying, hear our prayer. In joy and hope we pray, we pray to the Father, hear our prayer, that our risen Saviour may fill us with the joy of his glorious and life-giving resurrection. We pray to the Father, hear our prayer, that isolated and persecuted churches throughout the world may find fresh strength in good news of Easter. We pray to the Father. Hear our prayer. That God may grant us humility to be subject to one another in Christian love. Pray to the Father. Hear our prayer. That he may provide for those who lack food, work, shelter, or struggling to pay bills, in this difficult time. We pray to the Father. Hear our prayer. That by his power, war and famine may cease through all the world. We pray to the Father. Hear our prayer. That he may reveal the light of his presence to the sick, the weak and the dying. To comfort and strengthen them and their families especially George and Audrey Sayers. We pray to the Father, hear our prayer, that he may send the fire of the Holy Spirit upon his people so that we may fear, sorry, so that we may bear faithful witness to his resurrection. We pray to the Father, 
Hear our prayer. Amen. And we join together in the prayer that Jesus taught us. We say together, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We're going to stand again to sing, Crown Him with Many Crowns. here and those that come by other, other means. May we bring glory to you through them. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. That final hymn <clears throat> is really powerful. Do, do take a seat just for a minute. That final hymn is really powerful and I remember we sang it on um, Ash Wednesday and um, just a picture that those pierced feet of Jesus would be standing in Kiev 
and um, that there would be peace. And so just want to hold that picture of resurrection and hope and peace for Ukraine now. Lord, we pray that your power would say, would sway scepters, that there might be peace, Lord. We pray especially for wisdom right now for those who are negotiating behind the scenes. But Lord, we pray for that time when we see your glorious wounded feet stand in free Kiev. Amen. Have a few notices, um, <clears throat> but not many, you'll be grateful. So our annual parochial church meeting, our APCM, is going to be on the 20, 22nd of May, so not next week, but the week after. Um, and there will be a private live stream um, link if you want to join in with the meeting um, at 11.30. It's ideal because you can come to church and then just stay for a little bit longer, an extra coffee, and, um, and be here and hear what's going on. If you um, head up a group or um, do something particular in church, um, we'll need a little report from you to tell us what's going on and what prayer you would like, uh, how you'd like us to continue to pray for you in the coming year. So please do um, send your reports in to Rosie and um, she'll give you details about what she wants. On, um, on Tuesday, we have the community lunch here. So I would uh, really welcome your prayers for that, where different agencies uh, across the borough who work in this area meet together to network and find out um, what's going on, what's on offer, what everybody is able to um, give, uh, what resources are available for people in our community and how to signpost towards that. So please do pray for that. It's a really good time of connection and building relationship and makes a difference in our community. And if you would like to come to that and you feel there's something that you'd like to contribute there, please do let me know and we can book you in. Um, we just ask for a lunch contribution of uh, £3.50. Um, so far, I think we've got uh, quite a few helpers, but we could possibly do with another couple of helpers just to help us make tea and coffee and serve lunch. It would mean getting here at about um, 11 o'clock and, um, and finishing off uh, about half past two. So do let me know if you can help as well. We've got some very exciting news. There's gonna be um, a baptism service on the 5th of June and, um, and we'll have a pool for full immersion. So if you are interested either in renewing your baptismal vows with full immersion or would like to be baptized for the first time, please come and have a chat with me and, um, and we will take you through a little bit of training and um, some questions to be able to do that. Very exciting. Um, and I think that's probably it for notices. Oh, no, no, um, not next week, but the following Tuesday, we're starting a cafe space called, now I've got to get this right, the Oak Cafe at St. Peter's. Yes, got it right the Oak Cafe at St. Peter's. And it's called the Oak Cafe because of um, the Mission Oak that was just up in, um, we talked about that on our launch day, uh, that Francis Painter, who was part of the estate, um, would send people under if they wanted to go out to do things in the world. And so this sense as well about um, oak, about the way in which from a small acorn, acorn a big tree grows and this beautiful sense of God's oaks of righteousness, something, a planting of the Lord for the display of his splendor. It's the sense that God has got good things in this place. And an oak is an incredible thing that comes from something small and lasts for hundreds of years. So the Oak Cafe at St. Peter's opens for business uh, from 10 till two, Thank you. 10 till 2 on Tuesdays from the 17th of May. So tell your friends and come along and have a cup of tea. And if you fancy making a cake for us, let us know. That would be smashing. I think that's just about everything. Let's, um, if there's not, then I'm sure we can make announcements other times. Let's stand together and share these words. <clears throat> 
please respond the words in yellow. To a troubled world, peace from Christ. To a searching world, love from Christ. To a waiting world, and the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and with those whom you love this day and always. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God. Please do stay and join us for coffee.
Yeah.